Okay, we're live. All right, take it away, Josh. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Wikimedia Foundation December Metrics meeting. Um, this is going to be a little bit of an unusual meeting because our usual um, gathering spot in SF was not available for uh, interesting but not pleasant reasons. Um, so please bear with us if there are uh, technical issues. All right, I'm going to dive right into our theme for today. Um, as was introduced in last month's metrics meeting, each metrics is going to have kind of a theme uh, to help kind of give a narrative and a sense of coherence to the topics and updates that you're about to get. Um, and this month's theme is Wikimedia's role in the world today. Um, it's been a big year of changes and challenges, and I know there's a lot of focus on U.S. politics, but this is happening. Um, so we'll be hearing about work into how we're understood by the world and the audiences that we want to serve. We'll hear about plans for the upcoming year and thinking about how we as a movement want the world to understand Wikimedia and what role we should play in our future and in the future of the world. So our first update is going to be about uh, what the movement has been up to this past month. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to our first presenter. Which is me. I forgot about welcomes and new hires. Sorry about that. Uh, so two new requisition hires. So Angel Lewis uh, coming on board full time in talent and culture, which is very exciting. Yay. Uh, uh, and Francisco Danz in technology who's joining us from Spain. And then uh, two new contractors, interns, and or volunteers. So Emily Wood uh, in CE from Nevada, and Hui uh, Zhao uh, in Advancement in SF. And then anniversaries, um, we've got one six uh, year anniversary with Janice. And then uh, we've got a couple five years, Max Semenek and UV. And And then two four years, Matt Flashin and Katie Love. And three years, Nuria, Shira, and David. And two years, uh, Patik, Marco, Megan, and Nirzar, and Maria. And a couple one years, Mark Brent and Julianne. So, congratulations, everybody. All right, and with that, I will now hand it off to <laughs> a community a movement update. Can people hear me here? Oh, oh I didn't know you were just presenting. You can just. Oh, okay, do that. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Maria Cruz. I'm communications and outreach coordinator in the community engagement department. And I'm agitated because I was now a meeting for this one. <laughs> So, hi. Hi. This is so weird. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, the movement update is um, we, we're changing the uh, community update to uh, extend it, open it more. And we're going to have community stories and also uh, foundation um, updates for the past month. Um, and uh, we are also working towards aligning stories more with the theme of the. Of the metrics meeting, so I thought I would offer um, a, 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 the, each story associated with the theme. So uh, starting with BBC 100 Women, this was a global campaign, and uh, what is the role of Wikimedia in the world today? Here it is, a network of knowledge engines working in collaboration to bridge knowledge gaps. And what happens? Okay. It started as a partnership between Wikimedia UK and the BBC, uh, the public broadcasting company in the UK. And it originated a global campaign. 
Uh, this means that Tony Communities organized 19 events all over the world. 17 of them were in person. Cool. And uh, this, the global campaign was coordinated by a volunteer, Rosie, who you might remember is the co wikipedia of the year. So she did a great job uh, organizing uh, the 20 plus communities that uh, joined the events. And there were hundreds of biographies of living women created on site. Uh, BBC Hundred Women is a series that uh, is broadcasted on television and other news stations, uh, news platforms that the BBC has. Um, and every year they highlight a hundred women that are making history. This is the fourth uh, year of the series, and these are the women that uh, were getting coverage in Wikipedia. So. Wikipedia Education Program, um, the role of Wikimedia here uh, today, sorry, for associated with this um, story is innovative, uh, a series of innovative practices for all learning contexts. And I thought I would uh, feature here the Wikipedia Education Program in Turkey. Um, this uh, innovative program groups a series of activities that range from art and feminism edited tones to working with specific faculties in national universities. Um, each activity has a turnout of, uh, of participation that ranges from over five people to over 100 people. And uh, I thought it was interesting that they are working with the Department of Psychology um, of Uludag University to include uh, studies on Wikipedia usage and uh, attitudes, which I think may be related to some of the work we do here in uh, user research. And finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the community wish list. Uh, this is a project that is uh, managed by Community Tech uh, team in the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, but it could not be possible without the engagement of Wikimedians all over the world. And I really wanted to highlight these numbers because um, I can see the comments in my slides. Um, I believe there was a 47% increase in which is submitted. Wow. In this, this was the second year that this uh, survey was um, hosted by this team. And a 78% increase in participation. Last year was uh, 634 contributors. This year was over 100,000, uh, sorry, 1,100, over 1,100. Um, the categories that received the highest number of tech wishes were editing, Wikidata, watch list, multimedia, and commons. And there were also new categories in this uh, call for uh, wishes, which are program and events, mobile and apps, search, admins and stewards, and citations. And the results are up today, and you can visit them there. And now moving on to foundation highlights. Um, community engagement has begun the translation process for uh, the insight survey that will be launching in January. Uh, Eleni rolled out the program and events dashboard to 500 uh, program leaders, and there's a uh, demo on YouTube that we're working to make shorter at the moment. Uh, technology kicked off the project to reconstruct article history for all projects uh, since the beginning. This data pool will be the backend of the new wiki stats 2.0. Uh, legal and communication. Uh, Place an op ed in Canada, the Globe and Mail, one of the largest Canadian papers, which seeks to influence an open case with the Canadian Supreme Court related to freedom of information online. Nice. Product, the iOS team released an update version of the Wikipedia mobile app, including a couple back fixes. The ability to create longer passwords and password managers, and the ability to add announcement cards uh, to users on the explore feed. Yes. And finally, security and legal. Thank you for all your work in handling the security breach last month and uh, taking steps like two factor authentication to keep the site secure. <laughs> and thank you, Sam, for putting together the foundation highlights slides. And this is are the upcoming uh, the things coming up in January 2017. We will have the Wikimedia Developer Summit. We will have the All Hands Meeting 2017. That is the meeting that brings all of the staff 
from all over the world to San Francisco. And we all get together in today. And uh, the community engagement insights service is going out to editors, volunteer developers, affiliates, and program leaders. And with no further ado, I pass it on to the audience update. Nice job, Maria. Thank you, Maria. All right. Yeah, with that, uh, Sam, or, uh, Mel, I think you're going to go first on audience updates. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, Toby, are you there? I think Toby's taking the first couple slides, and then he's going to toss it to me. Yeah, right. I'm actually introduced Mel. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go for it, Toby. Well, so I wanted to tell you about a, um, a collaboration between product and communications um, that is super exciting, and I hope it's going to be useful to the rest of the foundation and the community. It's called the audience's update. Next slide. So there's a poster hanging on the sixth floor in the San Francisco office. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> and it's this. And this is an awesome poster because it reflects our mission and, and the scale of our ambitions. But for product managers, it's kind of a bad poster. And the reason is <laughs> if you're a product manager, you really, you really want to be able to connect with your audience and, and to understand their motivations and empathize with them. And it's really difficult if there are more than 7 billion of them because obviously um, there are profound differences um, around the planet. So, uh, so we really, really, we really sort of ran into this when we were first thinking about the New Readers Project, because even though that 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 project does sort of divide the world, um, we're still you know working with with six billion people, and, and you know again it's very difficult to be able to connect with your users, and so we did a, a basic um, segmentation process or. And, and, and came up with the, the three countries that we've decided to focus on, India, Nigeria, and, and Mexico. But then we really really came to believe that, gosh, we really need to do this for, for all of uh, the audiences, for, for the projects that the foundation um, the foundation operates. And so we turned to, to Julia and, and Mel and Combs to um, work with them on, on building a map of our audiences. And hopefully this can become a common frame of reference, not just for product, but for everybody. And so Mel, um, Mel's going to tell you about the project in detail. Hi, everyone. I'm Mel. I started at the foundation in August. Um, and for the past few months, I've been working with Juliet and Abby on the design research team on this initial audience work that Toby mentioned. Uh, the work is in a couple of phases. And the first phase was basically figuring out uh, what we do and don't know about the people we serve. Uh, because knowing what the foundation currently thinks about our audiences and understanding our current approach to audience development then helps us find gaps in our understanding that might prevent us from achieving our mission. So the first step has been simply to figure out what we know, what we don't know, and what we'd like to know about our audiences. Next slide. So this was our process, and this is a timeline. It's also up on Wiki. And I'll explain what took place over the past few months and then what's going to take place next. Next slide. Before I do that, though, I should say how we might be able to use this stuff. So it's really, really helpful for us to be able to identify gaps in our knowledge so we can figure out future opportunities for research akin to the new readers. And then we can apply that work to design, product, program, strategy, et cetera. Um, it helps when we have actionable insights so we can say, okay, we're here. If we try this or that, uh, where are we now? Next slide. So we ran five workshops over the past two months with about 40 people in all different departments across the foundation. The full methodology is up on Wiki and the link should be in IRC, but I'll summarize here. Uh, we asked them questions like, how do we define our audiences? Where do we currently get information about our audiences? How do we use this information in our work? How are we meeting or not meeting audience needs? And who are the potential audiences that we're not serving and why? And over the next few slides, I'll just share a couple of things that we heard during those workshops. Next slide. 
Um, so the first thing we heard was similar to the poster that Toby shared earlier. Our audience is everyone. There is no demographic for Wikipedia. Next slide. A lot of people said that they were curious to learn more about people who have either started to edit on Wikipedia and no longer do and are, ab are abandoned by Wikipedia for some other kind of reason. Um, and other people said things like, we have a model for how people go from readers to editors, but we're not sure if that model is true. And we base a lot of our product assumptions on that. Next slide. And somebody else said, are we actually having an impact on the people we're trying to reach? Um, we heard repeatedly that people want the kind of information that came out of the new readers research. They expressed to us that there are challenges in serving their various audiences. They told us that they want to know who we serve and how well those people are being served. And they'd like to incorporate information about audiences into their work and have it easily available and know where to find it and know where to find stuff that's also relevant to their work. So not just having it be easily available, but have it be relevant to what they're doing. Next slide. Those are just highlights. There were pages and pages of conversations that took place during these workshops. So we took all of the good insights that people offered and got together in San Francisco and found commonalities and overlaps so we could learn more about what we understood, what we needed to understand better, and what opportunities and challenges might exist for us as a foundation. Next slide. Uh, we thought about ways we could organize our descriptions and understanding of audiences under the following categories. Demographics, affiliation, expertise, platform, motivations, how well we're serving them, how much they might trust Wikipedia, the depth of the engagement or their relationship with Wikipedia, and how vocal they are. So are they part of a community that gets heard a lot? Are they part of a community that we're not hearing from a lot? Um, next slide. And we came up with ideas for tools that we could use to reflect our current understanding of audiences, find new ways for us to understand those audiences, highlight knowledge gaps and our strengths, and integrate audience research into our product development. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So there are two diagrams in very, very early draft phases um, that are up on Wiki for comment. And they're actually already going to have a second iteration available. So this is not the most recent diagram that exists. Uh, but this is a map that defines our audience groups and our relationships with one another according to the role that they play in Wikipedia's production flow. We can use this map to enable conversations around this project and why it's needed and to identify our knowledge gaps about who our audiences are. And I should say that in these audience workshops, we identified over 400 different audiences that we currently or would like to serve. So not every group is represented on this map. It's a model for us to say, if we identify a audience group that's not on this map, where would they go? And does that fit in with our mental model? Next slide. This is the other diagram that we um, came up with in the synthesis workshops, and this demonstrates how much we currently know about our audiences, uh, their relative size, and new ways to understand them. So this can serve as a starting point for building a common language and organizing principles into our understanding of our audiences and how they relate to one another. And we can use this map to engage different teams across the foundation on how well it accurately represents our knowledge gaps and why addressing these gaps is important and then how to do so. Next slide. So how does this help us? Next slide. <laughs> in lots of different ways. Um, as Toby said earlier, you know, if we're designing for everyone, we're, we're not really designing for anyone in particular. So this allows us to develop products and designs based on users, new, user needs, behaviors, and motivations. And then we know how and where various audiences may be and how to reach them. Um, next slide. So the next steps are coming up with criteria to prioritize the audiences for gender research and developing a list of those audiences um, and segmenting in the ways that I mentioned earlier and then developing research plans to specifically learn more about those audiences, sharing that out and using that information as another method of informing our product life cycles. Next slide. So if you would like to know more, please feel free to email me. I'm relatively new to the foundation. Um, you can also go to the OnWiki page. There is a mailing list where people are sharing information about um, audience research. And I'm really, really looking forward to prioritizing these audiences and then learning more about them. Thank you. And so uh, real quick, I, I definitely should have said that it's a collaboration between product comms and design research. So thanks, Abby, for your, for your work on this. Yeah.
And we've also been working with Reboot, who some of you may know um, is an external research firm from um, the, Re the New Readers Project. So they've been great as well. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, I think we'll go. We have a lot of on our agenda today, so I think we'll go ahead to the next presenter, and then if there are questions, we'll circle back at Q and A time at the end. Just hold on to those questions. Um, so next is going to be an update about the English fundraiser from Megan. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. Um, I can. Hi, yep. it's Megan. Uh, it's it's fundraiser time and we're still in the middle of it. It's the middle of December now. So I'm gonna share a quick update. Um, and then later in, in 2017, we'll share more of a full analysis. Um, uh, next slide. Uh, so we hit the goal. That's the big news. Uh, thank you to everybody who donated and to everybody who contributes to Wikipedia to make it something that's worth donating to. Um, so, so that's our big news. It's, it's been a um, very exciting couple of weeks and very busy, so thank you as well to the fundraising team. Uh, we're roughly around 28 million right now. Um, that's, that's a moving number that's not settled or, or verified um, entirely, so it's a rough number for now. Um, there, there's an announcement going out later today about, um, about us hitting the goal and what that means for banners for, for the rest of the month. Um, so that'll go to the mailing list later today, but for now, I'll just give you an update about how we're doing so far. Um, we have been testing lots of different banners to, to, to reach our, our readers. We've tested about 350 so far in the last couple of weeks. We've sent 11 million emails to past donors asking them to give again. Here, something new is that we limited banner impressions after two days. So that means that people who read lots and lots of Wikipedia articles do not continue to see lots and lots of banners, um, something that we feel pretty good about. And in the last two weeks, donor services team has responded to 23,000 reader emails. Uh, I believe that is a new record. So thank you everybody for working on that. Um, and this year has been uh, very stable technically. Um, for the last three months, the fundraising tech team worked to solve um, a single point of failure in the system. And it was a big undertaking. Other projects had to be, be moved to work on this. And um, it, it would not have been possible for us to reach the goal already without this work that they did. So so thank you to, to FR Tech for just making it all work <laughs> securely. Um, and other teams contributed as well. So, so thank you to everybody who worked on that and who had patience with that process as well. Uh, next slide. So where did all of the gains come from? Why were we able to reach the goal so quickly? Um, I've heard some rumors and some partially correct answers about this, so I'm happy to share some more information with you today. Next slide. For one thing, the banners are better. Next slide. <laughs> uh, here's just the quick reminder of what we looked like last year on desktop. Next slide. And this is us now. Nice. Look ahead. Uh, what's about a 45% improvement from last year. There's lots Hi. of things here. Thanks, guys. Um, this, this came from lots of tests, a series of, of tests on our form, on the color we changed in response to, to feedback we received, and a lot of changes to the message, which I'm going to talk about mostly today. Um, but but this is part of where the gains came from. Same thing on mobile. This is last year's banner. We go ahead to next year, or this year's, sorry. On the next slide. And click ahead. And this year on mobile, we're, we're seeing a big increase as well. Uh, click ahead, Juliet. Yeah, wow. we're about 50% wow. better on mobile than we were last year at this time. Wow. And it's similar to desktop. It's a lot of improvements to to the flow, small wording, donation form, um, and also the message has, has gone through a pretty big transformation. Um, go ahead. 
our emails are doing a lot better as well. So these are emails to people who have already donated um, in, in previous years. We're sending them a reminder this year. Um, and, and there have been lots of improvements to, to the message here as well, um, as well as to, to the layout and the design and subject lines and things like that. But, but the messages are overall performing a lot better. Um, and they're, they're longer this year, which is, which is interesting because we have more space to, to talk about um, our vision and, and they're actually performing better as well. So, so good news on email. Next slide. Uh, we also have more contacts this year. So every year that we run the fundraiser, we we add more people to our donor contact database and we have more people to email. Um, so the amount that we raise from email is going up every year. And last year, our list grew 26% and we've raised 45% more in donations compared to this time last year, just from email alone. Um, and we're seeing an 8% improvement in dollar raised per email sent. And, and this really defies industry standards and any projections that, that have been made. Um, usually as your, your list grows and ages, um, it becomes less valuable and less productive. But through our iterative testing, um, we've actually been able to improve the performance of our emails. Um, so we're in a unique situation here and, and it's working really well. Um, next slide. Oh, um, actually, can you go back to the last one? I think I missed one. No, okay, sorry, go ahead, next slide. Um, so what's new with the message? We had a big goal this year, and it was to update the message to better reflect our vision and our values. Uh, next slide. So a couple months ago, we asked Jimmy and Catherine if we could interview them, um, and they said yes, luckily. <laughs> And we, we had these interviews recorded and transcribed, and we took the transcripts and really just pulled a lot of ideas um, and, and a lot of direct quotes straight from, from the transcripts and put them into emails and banners. And, and it's really resonating with people. Um, next slide. We also had a lot of help from staff and community in the last few months. We've been running workshops um, asking for, for feedback. And then just in the last couple of weeks, Joseph Seddon has been sending messages to the mailing list asking for lines. And we've gotten a lot of fantastic messages. Um, thank you to everybody who sent things in. I'm not gonna read all these out, but, but take a look. These are all messages that have run in the last two weeks since the campaign has been up. Um, and it's been really a lot of fun to try to piece together all, all these different ideas and, and put it in one kind of coherent message. Um, and we've received a lot of really good feedback specifically about these new messages. So, so again, thanks to, to everybody who's been um, sending ideas in. Uh, next slide. So we have learned that genuine messages from real humans work. <laughs> Yes, human. <laughs> when we talk with people who really care, like Jimmy and Catherine and community members and staff members, um, they have a real passion that that resonates with our readers. Um, and as the founder, Jimmy can say things that nobody else in the planet can say, and that's really powerful. So, so yes, more talking from real humans, and and we've also been able to make our messages a bit longer. Um, and a lot of fundraising um, professionals will say that, you know, our message is too long, but for us, it works. Our readers are happy to, to read more about us and, and to learn more about the movement, which is, which is great. Um, on a process side, we also learned something that works well for the team. Uh, we have a lot of remote people on the fundraising team. And last month, five of us got together in person and did a five day sprint, really focused on, on messaging. Um, and it was really valuable to take time out of our regular schedule, our regular to-do lists and meetings to, to think just about this one thing and get as many ideas out as we could. Um, and, and yeah, I think we are gonna do it again, but, but we learned that that was really a worthwhile exercise. 
Um, next slide. Um, I think we're going to take a moment to uh, let our presenter turn off her personal messages. I can share my screen if that's helpful. Yeah, I think just give her a second, actually. Sure. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> But it was it was really fun um, to 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 kind of get in person, have these interviews, kind of long transcripts, have a bunch of ideas from community staff members, and try to put it all together in something coherent. It was really like a puzzle, um, and it's still going on. <laughs> so the puzzle continues. Sorry, everyone. That's okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it sounds like on the public stream that was invisible, but uh, Juliet, who's driving the slides, was getting um, personal messages that we were seeing. So we're just giving her a second to. I actually can't find the slides. It's up from my deck. It's up from there. Oh. Yeah. Now we're past it. It's the. It's down now. Slide number. Yeah, so. Oh, it's oh, weird. Would anyone else be able to bring it up? Because I'm actually not seeing it in the slide in the presentation anymore. Yeah. I'm happy to take it, Juliet. Hey, oh, we were on uh, slide 50. Just FYI. Slide 50. Oh. Ah. Oh. And it won't refresh now, so just jump to 50. Oh no, 50 is not uh, the right one. Yeah, something happened to the deck. You want me to stop sharing and you can go? I can share screen, I still see it. Yeah, why don't we have Megan go ahead and me... take over. Does that work, can people see? Yeah, you got to click on it in here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. You are back on, Megan. Great. Um, so this is a message that's up in the current banner now. I'll just leave it here for a moment if people want to read it and people can come back to it later. I know we're short on time. And another one that's in our email. Nice. So those are a couple of the, the new material that, that's up and performing well, and we're, we're getting good feedback about it. Um, and think about that, have that in your mind. Hopefully it'll give you a couple ideas because I'm gonna ask you for some later. <laughs> um, on social, Jeff and the communications team has done a really good job um, this year of spreading the word about the fundraiser. Uh, over 3 million Facebook users have seen this I Love Wikipedia um, uh, profile frame and 9,000 people have used it on their own picture. On Twitter, six and a half thousand people have used the hashtag I love Wikipedia and two million people have seen that hashtag. Um, and the social part has has really been fun this this campaign. I think it's added a lot. It's been positive and um, and thank you guys for for helping spread the word there. And how you can help you can uh, help spread the word. You can update your your Facebook picture, tweet about the fundraiser, ask people to donate. Um, that would be great. Your ideas could also be helpful. We will have banners up for, for part of the rest of the month, and we really want to use this time to try to make the message something that we all can feel really proud about. Um, so if you have any ideas, please email me or just Joseph Seddon, his email is here. Um, or you can go on the fundraising page on Meta 
but uh, but yes, it's a great opportunity. The banners are up right now. So think about what you would want to tell our readers um, about the movement and, and we can work on it. So yes, it's been a big month or a big couple of weeks. Thank you everybody who's donated um, to everybody who's who works on Wikipedia, who everybody on the fundraising team, comms, legal, um, reading team, really all departments have pitched in. Um, so thank you all. It's 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 been a big sprint. Thanks a lot. Woohoo, let's hear from Megan and the Dutchman. Should I stop sharing? What should I do? Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and switch back. Give us a second. And then I know there was just a few questions on IRC. Again, we'll just hold those to the end since we have one more big uh, content block, which is going to be next uh, about the movement strategy and plans and what we know thus far. So that, that's up there. Oh, yeah, that's all. So they can see it in here too. Okay, so I'm going to um, talk a few minutes before I dive into the slides and um, I brought some notes because I'm not ashamed to prepare. <laughs> wow. um, I, uh, I wanted to start out by saying uh, 2016, if you're listening, I'm looking forward to saying goodbye to you. <laughs> um, maybe we could all have a finger wave for all of us who are done with 2016. Yes, many of us, okay. Uh, I want to tell you uh, what we know about strategy thus far. First, uh, uh, just a little bit of a narrative and then some slides. Um, we had to get our minimum viable act together to do so. Um, and I think if we had shared earlier, we would have inspired minimum viable confusion. Um, because we were still making sense of the challenge before us. Um, it's a tricky thing when you're a leader with a new challenge, and I think that's the position that Catherine's in right now. Um, she got to a great start. That much is clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you attended Jody on the Lance and uh, Angel's meeting on the engagement scores this morning, you know that we've had yet another bump in our scores. Um, and I think in large part, um, it's because of you guys. Um, you've been focused and kind and really trying to make it work. Um, and uh, I'd like to have a shout out right now for our interims. Um, yeah. I think we've all, Jody, seen a real attitude of service from them. Um, some of them doing two jobs under fairly unclear conditions in the beginning. And I've seen people working hard to do the right thing for the right reasons, and it's not always easy. So everyone's really played their part in that. Um, but I think in this regard, the in terms of movement strategy, the EB's challenge is unique. The board has charged her with building a movement strategy. It's a tall order. A uh, few have done this particularly at a global scale. So to some degree, we're stepping into unknown territory. It's a little bit exciting, a little bit scary. Let's just say I feel very awake. <laughs> uh, we had originally begun talent discussions relative to strategy with the brilliant Siko Hutters and the uh, ever intelligent Anasuya Jen Gupta, uh, two women who have served this movement very well, very well. Um, we engaged in conversation with them for a couple weeks as to whether they would run the process. And ultimately, they said that they wanted to stay working for their new initiative, Who's Knowledge. You should check it out. It's really cool. Um, and they wanted to maintain sustainable pace in their lives. Uh, we were crushed, uh, but the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> And uh, we wanted to support them in doing what their heart wanted to do. Um, this also happened to be about a week before the potentially biggest board meeting in our history. Uh, we needed to make a significant ask of the board for the talent and logistics we'd need to pull off this kind of challenge. So uh, Catherine then had to focus on preparing the board 
uh, Lisa Guillaume, who you will hear about more soon, uh, and I kicked in the high gear in search of talent. Uh, we don't have this talent within our immediate movement. This talent exists few places in the world. Uh, people who are seasoned in the nonprofit sphere, altruists at heart, uh, extensive international experience, particularly in the developing world. Uh, add on that the ability to architect not just a strategy, but a movement strategy. And finally, they must be willing to deal with us. Uh, we're a bit of a raucous, a raucous group. So uh, the talent pool thins out pretty quickly. Uh, the good news is, is that we've vetted a number of candidates and think we have really solid leads who meet most, if not all, of our qualifications that I just read to you, the criteria I just read. Um, there's no decision, but the C team is doing some final vetting of people that they think are top notch, so stay tuned. Um, what I'd like to do is walk you through some high level notes of what we do expect by Wikimania and what we don't, and uh, what we expect to do between Wikimania and 2018, and how we're thinking about structuring the core team. Now you have this wonderful title slide that I'm sure you're all thrilled about. So, um, given our past experience, when, when many of us think of strategy, next slide, uh, we, we think of this. This is Guillaume's work of art, uh, his offering to you today. I love to strategize all the things. Um, next slide. Uh, we tend to think of drawn out processes somehow leading to strategic plans with buckets of work and very detailed goals. Next slide. Here's another one of Guillaume's illustrations of that point. You have obviously lots of chatting people and text buckets who are magically shoved through a magic wand and it results in a strategic plan with a somewhat sort of Roman-like god blowing a trumpet. Next slide. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> uh, next slide. What we're looking for by Wikimania instead is a strategic direction. It should be more than a mere synthesis uh, or distillation of inputs. It'll need to be coherent meaning making and a lot of citations, but it's not yet a detailed strategic plan. Uh, next slide. A strategic direction is a general layer of meaning that sits right below the vision and speaks plainly and simply about a movement-wide theme for the next 15 years. Next slide. Once we have our thematic direction clarified, after Wikimania, we can talk through our roles across the movement, the resources needed, and hammer out the details. And we'll have greater visibility about that phase as we make our, through, uh, make our way through phase one and start to learn what's working, what's not working. So let's look at a very simple example. Uh, say we all got together all across the movement and beyond and defined participation as a theme before or at or up to Wikimania. And we had all clarified the types of participations that we'd like to see. For example, new geographies, new readers, new editors, healthy communities. Next slide. Then after Wikimania, we again gather in various groupings uh, to talk about what different stakeholder groups would like to contribute toward participation and the resources needed to pull it off for the long haul together. Uh, but first things first, we need a team. Uh, next slide. So let's start with the lead architect, uh, somebody responsible for moving us all to the final product and us all, meaning our ecosystem of affiliates, users, experts, new users, cultural and education institutions, the Wikimedia Foundation. And this, this, this pick, go back. Sorry. This, this, this picture here on the right, although I, I love it, Kiam, it's a little misleading because this person will not be a lone wolf. Next slide. 
we're going to partner the lead architect with uh, Guillaume, a longtime Wikimedian who knows the movement, its history, and really is painfully obsessed with documentation. <laughs> Yeah, let's hear it. Wait till you see what he did with the values process. I think the back of my head blew off when I when I saw it. Uh, next slide. And uh, they'll need a smart, dedicated project and stakeholder manager. Susie will be joining us. She'll keep the rent the trains running on time, and she's definitely proven that she can deliver under stress. Thank you, Susie. Uh, next slide. Uh, we'll organize the rest of the small core team according to the various stakeholder groups we need to include. Uh, movement affiliate, affiliates, editors or contributors on wiki, uh, new users, new geographies, and experts. Next slide. And uh, we're going to pair each one of those leads with a movement partner, someone similar to or like Guillaume in a different regard with that, pers that specific subject matter of expertise. Next slide. And that's what we currently know, the entirety of it. <laughs> Uh, there was a little bit of a chicken and the egg situation here. Some people internally are like, you don't have enough yet plan uh, enough plans yet. Some people externally were like, where are your plans? So this is kind of trying to figure out what to communicate when, but this is what we know so far. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with that, I think we will start question time. Um, James, I know there's been a few backed up on IRC. Do we want to start with those? So I'm going to uh, declare that the questions previously have been mostly answered in line, but we did just get one from Matt on the strategy process. How does the role of the new strategy group relate to the roles of the board of trustees and advisory board? Huh. You want to take a swing at that? Or you want to take a swing at that? Yeah, I just get my thoughts together. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. So, yeah, I can say it again if that would help from ideas. It's um, how does the role of the new strategy group relate to the roles of the board of trustees and the advisory board? Yeah, so I think I think the the board is obviously a super super important stakeholder in the strategy process and you know their their thoughts and, and and opinions on where we go forward matter a lot um i think there's other stakeholder groups and the the strategy groups charge will be to get kind of input from everybody from every stakeholder group and kind of lead us to something that's going to have all hopefully everybody on board Certainly, the Board of Trustees has to be on board with what, whatever it is we end up with at the end of the day. So I, I, I think their role is one, I mean, this originated with them, largely, you know, to, to do this. Um, they have supported it going forward. And um, obviously, we need to have their continued support and, yeah, until, until the end. And the strategy group will, um, you know, I think, I think, talk to them a lot as stakeholders and and engage them a lot in the process just as they do other stakeholders to you know at the end of the day have something that is has broad support you give the advisory board oh, so oh no just, i didn't I, I think the advisory board is an interesting question um the advisory board is largely a group of individuals who've either been involved with this in the past, often as former trustees or people who've made sort of extraordinary commitments to uh, our work or contributions to it, um, who are advocates for our values and, and our mission um, in the broader sense. And I think that as we were looking at the different stakeholders that we'd likely need to consult, and as Lisa said, or sorry, as Anna said, the process itself is sort of TBD. We know that we have a resolution to support resourcing in order to build a process that's going to be effective. And we're very much hoping that that co-building of the process will happen together uh, with folks who are interested from across the community. 
Um, but we did start to do at least a little preliminary mapping of stakeholders in order to understand um, how, what sort of resources we would need in order to make this an effective process. And one of the stakeholder groups that we identified, both in terms of, both through looking at past processes, looking at best practices for developing strategy processes, um, and in looking at the world around us was external stakeholders, folks who are experts in their field, whether that be in education and cultural institutions and uh, knowledge generation in um, technology and innovation, you name it, folks who are not necessarily in the movement in, sen in the sense of being contributors um, or community members or members of affiliate organizations or staff members here, but folks who are interested in what we do and have expertise to lend to bear. And I think the overlap there between external experts and the advisory board is, is really the same. And so hopefully through the process of engaging external experts, that will also engage the advisory board. I think that they're a subset of those folks that we'd like to talk to. Have any further questions at this point? Wow, great. Uh, I have a I have a question for Megan, which is I kind of came up in IRC, which is about the um, feedback on messaging around new, you know, new, the neutrality of our message and being fact based and kind of dealing with the fake news, um, you know, uh, environment uh, that we find ourselves in, and how that is if that messaging has been effective, but also how the feedback has been around that messaging. Yeah, we've tried um, a few different variations of fake news and false news. And um, that exact wording isn't in the banner today, but it, it has been over the last few weeks. Um, I think, yeah, people have responded positively. We, we, have, received, we have received good feedback from it. Um, it just happens to be that the, the lines that are up now um, about Wikipedia being useful for you and that we provide a reliable um, neutral source, source of information are resonating a little bit more closely with people. So uh, I think that we still have versions to try and different ideas, but the exact wording of, of the message I put up earlier about the reliable neutral information is, is, um, is performing a little bit better right now. Cool, thank you. And Jeff is saying that um, people on social are saying that they give because of fake news. Cool. Interesting. All right, any other questions I see or in the room? Yeah, I've got another one just came in um, from Joe Matazzoni. I've never seen a 15 year strategy before. It seems clear that the movement priorities will need to shift during that fast stretch of time. Is an example you can show of a plan that looks like this for similar organizations? Yeah, so um, again, as I said, we're not talking about a strategy, we're talking about a thematic a theme for the next uh, 15 years and how we will continually allocate resources either across the movement or within the foundation to head after that theme. Clearly, if after five years that theme is a corpse for some unforeseen reason, then we'll gather and re <laughs> um, But yeah, we're not going to have an elaborate, detailed strategic plan for 15 years. That would be nuts. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think one thing just to add to that is that as we look at the tension of the timelines that we work on, we know that software development timelines are often much shorter in time bots, and we know that the development of movements and communities takes time. If we want to grow leaders in our community, if we want to grow presence in, in places where we aren't currently, that requires a longer term commitment than a 12 month planning cycle. Even a three year planning cycle is often yeah. too short. And so while there will be a tension in terms of setting a direction and then executing and being able to continue to assess what are the right tactics um, and sort of sub strategies to achieve uh, progress in that direction. What we're really looking for is, honestly, this sort of a thematic direction. Where do we want to go? Who do we want to be? What will we be um, proud to have achieved as we look back? Uh, and then within that, it's very likely that we'll have planning and strategic planning cycles that are shorter in nature that help set interim uh, directions for what we need to do and how we allocate those resources and what's the priority set towards those longer term goals. And um, you know, 
I think it'll be interesting in that we don't have full control really of 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 the outcome of this, which keeps it exciting. Um, <laughs> but we haven't set themes. We're not going to have ten themes because how would we prioritize and make decisions? We need to have some kind of unifying clarity about you know thematically the direction we would want to go in together and if we have multiple themes could get a little bit funky um that's not to say maybe there might be one or two or something like that but if you start getting any more it's kind of more like a jackson pollock than a strategic direction great thanks guys um we've got a couple more questions we only have about two more minutes so uh Maybe James, do you want to go ahead and ask those, and then we'll call a question time over and move on to Wikilove. Sure. I'll, um, so there's one that's asking a question around fundraising effectiveness, and do we set a kind of target um, benchmark of if it reaches X percent of impressions <coughs> result in uh, a donation, then we hold steady there, or do we keep pushing forward? And how do we stop ourselves from blacking out the site to get 100% effective fundraising? <laughs> and um, the other one, back on strategy, was um, how do we um, evaluate the kind of value for money and time effectiveness of the strategy and avoid spending uh, potentially you know, millions of dollars on the strategy process? Or oh, I didn't take process. You want to take fundraising? Okay, or, or, or Megan, again? do you want to take it or do you want me to? Sure. Was the question, how do we not just go crazy and, you know, put uh, a big message? I didn't totally hear it. Was it like, how do we not just keep looking for gains that make the banner totally ridiculous? Yes. Okay. Um, well, yes, it would be easy to do that. We do know how we could raise more money if we really needed to. We could make the message really long and take over the whole page and we could make it blink and, you know, dance around the, the, the page and that you couldn't close it. Um, but that would be bad for a lot of reasons. <laughs> so, so we do test and we do always look for improvements, but we also rely on, um, on feedback that we get from, from readers and our community and our staff, um, about what's acceptable and what isn't. We, we run these feedback sessions. We ask people their opinions. We do, um, user tests and, and focus groups and surveys to, 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 to sort of learn about our limits, um, especially with any new approach, we we you know might run a preliminary test or run it by a few people before it actually goes up on the site. Um, and this year as well, we also have Joseph Seddon on the team, um, who's serving as our community liaison, um, and and he's been doing kind of one on one and group sessions to um, um, to to make sure that you know. Our, our banners and our messaging is consistent with with our values as well from the community perspective. Yeah. Thanks, Megan. So we are just over time. We still have one more agenda item. So if uh, we, maybe we can answer the strategy. I think there was, another, I think there was another question, David. Yeah, I was going to say, can we answer that real quick? Yeah, sure. So uh, value for money. Um, two things that I really think about and then um, the accountabilities, which is I think we've all become a cre increasingly clear of what it's costing us to not have this shared direction, to not mobilize us toward joint outcomes, to at least place us in direct relationships with the hundreds of thousands of people that use our site. I don't think we can afford not to do this. Um, I will say that uh, I used to do a strategy for a living, and I've seen the proposals that have been given to us. They're a third of the costs I'm used to seeing. They're radically nonprofit. High price tag for us, we're not used to seeing this, well below the industry standards with way above average talent. Um, that's really heartwarming um, for me to see. Again, Sticker shock for 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 maybe potentially a, a, a lot of us, but um, well below industry standards. Um, in terms of measurements, we've uh, again until you have the person signed on, it's all a straw man. But we have outlined a series of accountabilities for each and every role, 
um, that those people will be responsible for. And that's our starter kit. We can give you more as we progress. I don't know if you want to add to that. I think, your, you I think your point about what um, it costs us is really critical. I would also sort of take a look at the fact that uh, I think in total, the expected expenditure for the coming year will be under 5% of our annual budget to focus on strategy work. And when I say under, I mean a percentage point under at least. Um, and I think that that is a very reasonable amount of time and effort for us to be thinking into the future as an organization. Where do we want to go? Um, rather than thinking about how do we build budgets and plans and priorities based on where we've come from as incremental improvement, really thinking about where do we want to invest in order to achieve our mission among the midst of the new world from a technological standpoint, from a demographic standpoint, from a policy standpoint, from a variety of different perspectives. I might just add in a super concrete point on this, which, you know, there's a book beautifully talked about the big picture, but <laughs> from a major gifts perspective, I can tell you every single major donor says, I need to see your strategy. And even that inadequate strategy that we look back on from 2010, more than paid for itself directly from gifts from major donors, because um, that, you know, the pamphlet that we handed them, they all needed to see it before they would give us a, a grant. So every single one of those million dollar grants, or even, even 100, thousand dollar grant they asked to see uh you know a strategic vision something like that they, they do look at this work and it's it's a non-starter if we don't have it so from a very practical sense too this stuff this stuff is is absolutely necessary for the major gifts work and will more than pay for itself yeah one more thing <laughs> <laughs> I saw a earlier today and one of the key takeaways was around a lack of a vision that motivates our people to me, that is the reason that we do this work. Right there. If folks don't feel like they know how their work relates to what it is that we're doing and where we're going, then we need to invest in that. Great. On that note, I think we'll move on to a quick moment of wiki love and wrap up. <laughs> uh, someone wants to advance. Drive by love. Drive by love. So Wiki Love Live. We're actually going to skip into some pre-prepared Wiki Love. So we'll have to go to the next slide. Oh. So. Uh, on this one, so make sure I don't miss anything here. Um, on behalf of the foundation and the community, we want to give a huge thanks to all of the fundraising team. Um, their huge efforts scale for this big end of year campaign. We appreciate all their creative ideas, the many hours and meetings, and basically all the tireless and often invisible work that yeah. these people do. Um, you know, we're happy to celebrate their colossal efforts um, for this entire team. And um, each of you exceed um, our goals despite challenges. Um, and you do so with kindness, inspiring us, um, and for the future of our movement. Uh, to show our appreciation, each of the fundraising teams is receiving a sweet treat. Um, <laughs> uh, you can see Bologna, um, uh, Lance, um, Elena um, to receive your yummy uh, gift. Um, <laughs> and don't worry, remotes, um, we'll save yours for the um, all hands in January. And we promise not to eat them in the meantime. Uh, and we want to thank you all for your hard work. Oh, amazing. So. All right, we've got one uh, related moment of wiki love from IRC, which is from Katie. Um, he said, I wanted to give a shout out to Adam Wright, Adam White, of all the people at the foundation. I probably worked with him directly more than anyone else. And in that time, I have never known him to sit quietly when he sees an opportunity to do more good. I've received many notes over the years from random people letting me know that Adam's contributions turn something in their world around for the better. Uh, he's. Adam! I also have two more, uh, big shout out to Robert Miller. Yeah. 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 I hope keeping us together the past 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not all the time, uh, but particularly the past 24 hours. It's definitely gone above and beyond with our crisis of the truth. Uh, <laughs> the, the really, really tiny kind. Uh, 
Um, but, uh, <laughs> I uh, also want to uh, give a shout out to our um, safety team because yes. we had our um, San Francisco, uh, for those who are remote data for San Francisco, um, real evacuation drill. Um, and so also thank you to everyone who participated. You know, the team's been doing a lot of prep work on this. They went through work training, we've got safety packets all together. Um, so big thank you to the team yes. and also to us as well. I, oh, go ahead. I just want to say thank you to the ad hoc strategy team and everybody who's participated in those conversations, including the strategy reading group and the folks who came to uh, the directors' meetings and then went back and talked to their teams about where we might go. I just really appreciate the enthusiasm and I also appreciate y'all keeping the trains rolling down the tracks because it has been a little bit of organized chaos. <laughs> exactly the kind of chaos that we thrive in, but still nonetheless <laughs> chaos. So thank you very much. All right, on that note, only eight minutes over. I think <laughs> we're done. Thank you, everyone, for rolling with our unique metrics this month. <laughs> you were awesome, David. You were resilient. <laughs> Thanks. Don't let the bed bugs die. One quick announcement. Speaking of Wiki Love, if you want to show love to some of our major donors, we're going to be no. signing holiday <laughs> cards upstairs. Uh, so we just write that lunch. Not in the lounge, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it makes it so, so please, uh, please do, please do, please do,